In this lesson, we're going to consider how to use the Inventor CAD package to produce loading diagrams, shear diagrams, and moment diagrams. So before we begin, the first step is to make sure we're in the correct project. So I'll click the Projects button, and I do have ME466 project selected. So I'll click Done. Now I'm going to create a new and the last time we created something, we created a new part. This time I'm going to start with a new assembly. So I'll click Create. This is my second assembly of the day. I'll click Save. And I'll call this assembly Beam 2. In addition to some of the tools from before, we now have a new tab called the Design tab. And on the Design tab, under Frame, one of the options is a beam column calculator. So I'm going to click that button and I get some default sizes for length and section area and those types of things. Let's do the same problem we've done in some of the other examples. Let's let our beam be 20 inches long and the section, we haven't really defined a section, it doesn't even matter for the stress that's induced but for now we'll go ahead and say there's a rectangle and let's say the base is 2 inches by 2 inches and let's say the interior is 0 and 0 so it's a solid square bar okay that's populated what the section area and all of the modulus populated all those values okay let's go to the beam calculation now and I'm gonna switch to supports Looking at the supports, there's a free support. Let's see what its value is. It's located at the zero inch mark, and it doesn't allow any deflection. So no yielding in any direction. That's what we want. And then there's a second support. It's located at four inches. Let's change that to 20 inches. So tab. And again, we're not gonna let it do any deflecting at that location. And now let's look at our loads. There's one force. Notice I have a radial force, continuous load, some moments, and some torques. So we'll do a radial load. Let's edit that. And we were located at five inches away, and our value was 800 pounds. Okay, now very important. There's a calculation here where it'll calculate what the density of the beam is and use that as a distributed load. I'm going to uncheck the density. At this point we haven't taken into account the density of the beam itself. So to make these calculations match what we've done by hand, I'm going to uncheck use density. Uh, it's very rare that I wouldn't want to use the density, but for an academic prom prom problem we'll start with not considering the density. And that looks like everything I need. I'm going to click the calculate button. Oh, we've got some errors here. So notice a red line came up. If I do a fly down, it says load must be positioned under the component. So I must not have put something in correctly in my radial force. Let's go back into the radial force. Sure enough, I put in 50 inches instead of 5 inches. So OK. Let's try to calculate again. And it's showing a successful calculation. Let's take a look at what we see. Here's the beam graph. And let's look down the results here. Length is 20 inches. Support 1 has a value in the y direction of 600 pounds. Support 2 has a direction has a value of 200 pounds. That matches what we solved before. Uh, load has a deflection. We really didn't look at any kind of deflections up up into this point, but there's some deflection of how much the maximum is here. So let's have a look at our shear force. In the YZ plane, I have a shear diagram. This looks just like the ones that we've solved the other two methods. It goes up to 600 pounds, at 5 inches it drops 800 pounds to minus 200 pounds, and at 20 inches it goes back up 200 pounds to zero. The bending moment in the YZ plane also looks the same. It goes from zero to 250 foot pounds, and if we translate that into inch pounds this will be 3,000 inch pounds like we calculated before and then it goes back to zero at the 20 inch mark. So this is the same graph as what we've produced before. A couple other things to note. We've also found how it deflects. So this is the deflection angle. 
and this is the magnitude of deflection. If we were to watch it deform, this is where the maximum would, would occur, and this is what its value is. This 2,000, let's see, this minus 2,000 uh, micro inch deflection is occurring at the 5 inch mark where the F is where the force is loaded. And there's some other interesting things. Um, this lets us know if we wanted to make a variable diameter, what would be the ideal variable diameter for this shape to resist the loads. This is far beyond what we're talking about yet. Um, the main thing I wanted you to get is that you can use Inventor, the beam calculator, by plugging in your length here in the model tab and your loads and supports in the beam calculator tab and the beam graph, and now I've got a picture that shows here's where the two supports are, there's where the F, the force, the applied force is, and the YZ plane will give me my shear diagram, the bending moment YZ plane will give me my moment diagram, and this is equivalent to having done the other methods we've observed so far.